Hello and welcome. My name is Meepolis and this is Literally Graphic. And today we are going to be touching on a very, very interesting historical fiction sort of graphic novel entitled Run For It. Stories of Slaves Who Fought for Their Freedom by Marcelo de Salat. This is a collection of short stories that are, as the title sort of indicates, dealing with lives of slaves, escaping of slaves, and killing of slaves between the years 1500 and 1800 in Brazil. Although sometimes I forgot and thought it was in America because there's still a lot of the same imagery going on and obviously they're speaking English because it's translated because I'm a silly monolingual person. And apparently Brazil was the last country in the Americas to outlaw slavery, uh, perhaps in 1888. First off, this is not an introductory text or even really a storytelling text. <laughs> And to put things as concisely as possible, much of what appears to be going on in this book goes completely unsaid. <laughs> With some of it going unshown as well. As someone only recently coming into any sort of knowledge about the Afro-Latinx community, I'm not exactly sure what I took away from this book, but it was something. And it was something kind of important. Unfortunately, another thing I took away from this comic was violence against black women. And I would like to hit on this a little bit before I go any further because this book is affected, my opinion of this book is affected drastically by the presence of a lot of violence against women. Well, obviously slavery was brutal and disgusting, completely abhorrent. Go read Kindred if you have any questions as well as, you know, that I also did a review of the Nat Turner Slave Revolt book I read a while back too, which I would highly recommend if you have any questions about the brutality of slavery. But that put aside, I was highly disturbed by the author's deliberate choice to have seemingly all his female characters fridged in very deliberate ways. And I use fridge because I mean fridged. Poetically told, with beautifully striking art, there was still no getting around the fact that most of the stories either revolved around or at the very least included a black woman dying. It is hopefully going too far to say that no man died, but I really can't recall off the top of my head, and that alone is still pretty disturbing. It might have been slightly less noticeable if the book was just one story, but since it was a handful of shorter stories that were relatively quick reads, it was hard not to feel really disturbed by the author's choice, and I say that again deliberately, to create these historically inspired, but still, as far as I can tell, fictional accounts. I feel like it would have been slightly different if they were completely non-fiction, because again, that you can't really necessarily criticize things that actually happened. But since these things did not literally actually happen, and there could have been a lot of other parts of the brutalities and evils of slavery that didn't include so many black women dying. That said, I'm still really going to try and keep an open mind and a weather eye open for whatever else I can find from this author slash illustrator. Apparently they're a Brazilian of African descent, so the fact that the African diaspora as a result of the slave trade has been largely ignored in South America, apparently, I am told, is a very important issue to him on a personal level. And something that, according to some of my reading, he does work into most of his work. Although unfortunately, my library only has this one book by him and I don't know if any of his other work has yet to be translated or not. On top of that, his skill as an artist, as you will have seen through this flip through, is also obviously completely on point and very well done. Especially for black and white art that is so detailed, it never felt overly cluttered or overwrought. This is certainly a niche sort of book that will not have 
super wide appeal, but it is a very interesting and I still would say important book and I would definitely recommend it to people I know who are into kind of the more artistic side of comic books and aren't afraid of either slave narratives and can appreciate the different sort of art style that goes with it and also people who can handle so much violence against women. And as always, I would like to acknowledge that for the most part, all of my videos are filmed and produced on the traditional territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit, Anishinaabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation, land covered by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant.